Hello children, this is class 7, English 2, chapter number 6, Hitchhiker. What is the meaning of Hitchhiker? Hitchhiker means a person who takes lift or asks for a ride to passing by vehicles. In this story, we see a man gives a stranger a lift. A policeman stops them on their way and they are fined for over speeding. We don't know how the stranger befools the policeman and surprises the man with his sleet of hand. So we are going to read a story where there is a hitchhiker who takes lift from a car and there is a policeman who finds him for speeding the car and what happens then? Let's see. I had a new car, a big BMW. It had a top speed of 129 mph and a terrific acceleration. The body was pale blue. The seats inside were darker blue and they were made of leather. Genuine soft leather of the finest quality. The windows were electrically operated and so was the sunroof. The radio aerial popped up when I switched on the radio and disappeared when I switched it off. The powerful engine growled and grunted impatiently at slow speeds but at 60 miles an hour it began to with pleasure. So in this paragraph the narrator has described how beautiful and powerful his BMW car was. Move to the next paragraph. I was driving up to London by myself. It was a lovely June day. I was whispering along at 70 miles an hour leaning back comfortably in my seat with no more than a couple of fingers resting lightly on the wheel to keep her steady. Ahead of me, I saw a man thumping a lift. I touched the brake and got the car to a stop beside him. I always stopped for hitchhikers. I knew how it used to feel to be standing on the side of a country road watching the cars go by. I hated the drivers for pretending they didn't see me, especially the ones with big cars and three empty seats. The hitchhiker poked his head through the open window and said, Going to London, Governor? Yes, I said, jump in. He got into my car and drove. He was a small ratty-faced man with grey teeth. His eyes were dark and quick and clever, like a rat's eyes. And these cars were slightly opened at the top. He had a cloth cap on his head and he was wearing a grey-coloured jacket with enormous pockets. The grey jacket together with the quick eyes and the pointed ears made him look more than anything like more sort of a huge human rat. This story is written in first person. The narrator describes that how he was driving up to London alone in a lovely day of June when suddenly he saw that there was a hitchhiker and he gave lift to him. He explains that how much he hates the people who pretend that they haven't seen anybody standing there and especially he hates the drivers who have a big car and empty seats left. Even they do not give lift to any people who are in need. Then the narrator has described the man's look. The man whom he has given lift, he was ratty-faced. 
means he has a small face with great teeth. His ears were pointed and he was wearing grey coloured jacket with many pockets. Overall, he used to look like a huge human rat. What part of London are you headed for? I asked him. I am going right through London and out the other side, he said. I am going to Epson for the races. I wish I were going with you, I said. I love betting on horses. I never bet on horses, he said. I don't even watch them run. That's a stupid silly business. Then why do you go? I asked. He didn't seem to like that question. His little ratty face went absolutely blank and he sat there staring straight ahead at the road, saying nothing. I decided not to question him anymore. I remembered how irritated I used to get in my hitchhiking days when drivers kept asking me questions. Where are you going? Why are you going there? What's your job? Are you married? How old are you? And so forth. I used to hate it. The narrator asked the hitchhiker where he was going. And he answers that he is going through London somewhere, some other side to Epson for the races. On this, the narrator got excited and he said that I would love to go for betting on the horses. But to the reply, the hitchhiker said that he never bet on horses and he believes that it is a stupid thing to bet on horses or even to see them run. Then the narrator asked him another question that if he dislikes betting or horses so much that then why was he going that side? The hitchhiker had no answer for it. It started looking straight to the road. The narrator understood that he did not like his question. So the narrator decided not to ask him any more question. And he remembered that how he would be irritated when somebody used to ask him question. When in his hiking days, the drivers used to ask him different kind of questions like, where are you going? How are you going there? What is the job? Are you married or not? What is your age? And so many more questions. Because of which he used to get irritated. And the narrator did not want to make irritated this man. I am sorry, I said. It's none of my business what you do. The trouble is that I am a writer. And most writers are terribly nosy. You write books, he asked. Yes, writing books is okay, he said. It's what I call a skilled trade. I am in a skilled trade too. The folks I despise are them that spend all their lives doing routine jobs with no skill in them at all. You see what I mean? Yes. The secret of life, he said, is to become very, very good at something that's very, very hard to do. The narrator was sorry for asking so many questions to him. Then they started talking to each other and the narrator tells him that he was a writer. This was the reason why he was asking so many questions. According to the narrator, writers are nosy, means they always put their nose in others' matter. The hitchhiker was very impressed knowing that narrator was the writer. He says that, Writing is a very good skill. And also he added that he loved the people who are in a skilled business. And he don't value the people who do routine job. 
where there is no skill, just they have to complete their task. He says that the secret of life is to become very good at something, means to do something special. Like you, I said. Exactly, you and me both. What makes you think that I am any good at my job? I asked. There's an awful lot of bad writers around. You wouldn't be driving about in a car like this if you weren't no good at it. He answered. What can she do flat out? He asked. The narrator praised the hitchhiker said that you are a skilled person. Then the hitchhiker said, no, not only I, but we both are skilled. The narrator asked him, why do you think that I am good at my job? There are many awful writers around us. He said that, no, you are very good at your work because you are driving such a big car. This is the proof of your wellness. Then he asked the narrator about the car. What can she do flat out? Means what is its highest speed? 129 miles an hour, I told him. Open over up and prove it, he said. I pressed my foot on the accelerator. The big car leaped forward as though she had been stung. In 10 seconds or so, we were doing 90. Lovely, he cried. Beautiful. Keep going. I had the accelerator jammed down again the floor and I held it there. 100, he shouted. 105, 110, 115, 120. My passenger was jumping up and down. Go on, go on. Get her, get over up. To one to nine. After asking about the speed of the car, the man asked the narrator to prove that he has one beautiful and over speeding car. Listening to this, the narrator started speeding it and took accelerator. And then the speed of the car went to 90, then 100, to 105, 110, 115, and higher and higher in his speed. At that moment, I heard the scream of a police siren. It was so loud that it seemed to be right inside the car, and then a policeman on a motorcycle loomed up alongside us on the inside lane and went past us and raised a hand for us to stop. So children, because the narrator was riding his car in so high speed, a policeman came to them and he signaled to stop his car.